My grandfather preached a dynamic sermon on that day. I still get chills thinking of all the youth who came out and all that dunamis power that went out. That's the name for it, dunamis. It's youth day at the church and more youth in attendance than ever. I'm sure this power affected others there that day. For the past couple of years, the scheduling for Youth Day landed on days that didn't cooperate with the outdoor picnic and concert plans the youth choir had diligently arranged. Heavy rains ruined the first Youth Day. Anything not cemented had to be taken inside the church. Everyone there capable of lifting helped to get everything inside. But unfortunately, no one prepared for the harsh August winds. So after loading tables, chairs, plants, canopies, base blocks, centerpieces, etc. into the empty basement of the church, the men safely stored everything in its place while women moved on to pack food for families and all went their own way, safely ending their fellowship early. The following year, the winds passing through shattered so much glass inside the church. My grandfather had no choice but to close the church for restoration. It took two days to remove the downed trees and shrubbery that the July storm forced from their roots. There were three windows in the front of the sanctuary that were wholly shattered. The shattered windows were why those odd but mysteriously charming stained glass windows were installed but they always seemed a little awkward and out of place to me. The storm canceled this youth day before the festivities had the chance to start. Every year around this time, all the youth from churches affiliated with my grandfather's church would come together to celebrate our victories and be nurtured and encouraged in our spiritual walk. I believe the severe storms were weapons sent forth by the kingdom of darkness to stop the commission on that day. Does the kingdom of darkness know God's plans? I would ask my grandfather. I was that type, very curious, always looking for understanding, not in a rebellious way, at least at first. Well, the kingdom of darkness doesn't know God's plans, but they certainly know their end, was the answer my grandfather offered. At that time, he didn't realize the possibility that the kingdom of darkness could manipulate the weather. Neither did I. I still believed those storms were a form of demonic interference. Finally, this year the weather cooperated with our plans. Maybe the storms weren't tactics of the kingdom of darkness, I thought as I marveled with my grandfather at all the youth pouring out of the buses. Yeah, maybe this was the day it was all supposed to happen, thus God was the storm sender. Several new groups attended Youth Day this year. The youth we had never fellowship with heard about Youth Day and showed up. If things aren't growing, God ain't in it, my grandfather would say whenever he saw growth, as he did many times that day. I remember him being exceedingly joyful, receiving the youth with fervent hugs and love. They had attended past church events, but their appearance was so different from ours, the way they dressed. It felt like we saw them for the first time every time they showed up. The stares and extra attention probably made them feel uncomfortable, however, a couple of Amish youth came out with the Mennonites this time, and the Amish became the main attraction, bearing a bit of the burden of the Mennonites and the Nazarenes. The youth from the churches in the city were intrigued by the Amish. They thought they were in costume and a part of the play for the service. Why are they dancing in their costume, Mother D asked as she watched the Amish. No one understood the Amish attire as the standard way they presented themselves. Some claim to know all about it, calling them the Amish Mafia. The Mafia, Mother D unwittingly repeated as they entered the sanctuary. We all entered the sanctuary like warriors. A little wound up after devouring chicken and ribs and hot dogs and burgers and ice cream on the church patio, listening to Toby Mac and Mary Mary, Zoe Grace, and some of the other gospel artists who can make you dance, I showed off my dance moves and remember drawing attention too. I knew how to do some of those old dances my father and uncle would show off when they got together. The youth from Pennsylvania especially were into my dance moves. Now, some of the guys from the inner city churches were snickering, but it didn't stop me. Look at Lil John once said, 
They were laughing as he pointed towards me. My timidity wasn't visible on that day. As shy as I was, I felt comfortable and let loose. I can remember my dimpled, smiling face and confidence in my moves. I wanted to dance all night but surrendered my moves and remember being humbled and awestruck as my heavily beating heart pulsated as I entered the sanctuary. The sun illuminated the windows and its rays seeped through the stained glass showcasing the glorious colors of the spectrum. For this day, the colors displayed new primary hues. They were created for us by God. It gave the sanctuary a majestic appearance, noting a monumental or stately ceremony. Everyone, including the elders, were intrigued by the radiant presence we were experiencing in the sanctuary as we settled in. I remember hearing a lot of hallelujahs as the people entered. My grandfather wiped his forehead with his handkerchief, prayed in spiritual tongues under his breath, and peered into the congregation as he often does before making an altar call. He did this every Sunday and consulted with the Holy Spirit before reaching out to anyone in attendance who had not accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. That day was peculiar, however. He began the service with an altar call instead of ending the service with it. Careful in choosing his words, the Lord is not just interested in salvation today, he warned. He continued to pray in tongues under his breath much longer than usual, gazing at the congregants apprehensively. We were all silent, waiting in anticipation for what saith the Lord. We were also a little afraid for him. Two Sundays before, my grandfather collapsed on the pulpit while delivering a sermon. The paramedics rushed my grandfather to the hospital. He was diagnosed with congestive heart failure and stayed in the hospital for a week and a half. Word got out so fast that my grandfather collapsed. My mom, Lacey Peterson, his only child, started receiving calls from people offering condolences. My mom thought my grandfather had died until Pastor Tolbert called and informed her of the matter, assuring her of safe care for me. Pastor Tolbert was the assistant pastor of my grandfather's church. I had been visiting with my grandfather, as I always did before returning to school. He had a son my age. My mom had already been crying hysterically when Pastor Tolbert called. Her cries through the phone were enough to make me realize the urgency of the matter. Thus, I began to cry also. Your father's fine, Pastor Tolbert told her and reassuring me. He's in the hospital, but he's alive. Pastor Tolbert delivered the sermons in my grandfather's absence, giving my grandfather time to heal. This day was his first day back in the pulpit. Take your time, Bishop, Mother D yelled from the pew. The parishioners began to pray in the spirit all interceding for my grandfather. He bragged about the energy he was feeling. It's unfamiliar but fierce, he said as he shivered. Trying the spirit, he took a wobbly step forward and Mother D jumped, again calling on Jesus, fearing he would fall. Hallelujah, my grandfather said, assuring everyone he was fine. He finally posed his question to us youngsters who were increasingly becoming more foreign to him, not from a different country, but from a different era. But unfortunately, the same age would ultimately leave my grandfather behind. God has a question. It's a serious question, he said between outbursts of praise. I've never felt the Holy Spirit in this way. Hallelujah, he shouted. God is drafting today, he said. Which of you today will not only accept salvation, but accept God's offer to join his army. He shivered again. There's power in this place. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. O ye church of God. Oh, the church burst into praise then. Who is willing to join the army of the Lord on this day, this bright and glorious day? Well, my grandfather was correct about the question he needed to ask that day, but unfortunately, he never stood at that pulpit again. Several days later, the Lord called my grandfather home. His last work was to send soldiers to the battlefield, giving exclusive rights to a select group of recruits. I and many others accepted the call to join the army of God that day. None of us understood what the call meant, but as time progressed, at least for me, it quickly began to actualize.